Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. And for the first time in a while actually, just a Giants video that's like not a collab or not an NFL list mock draft video. I mean, to be fair, not much news going on that I feel like, you know, worth reporting. I was deciding whether or not to do a vid on the Landon Collins comments, but then in both my uh, New York license play guy Joe collab and the Bad Dog collab, we spoke about that. So, I mean, kind of took care of it there. I was thinking about whether or not to do an Odell Beckham Jr. trade rumors video, but then the trade rumors got debunked. You know, it was a fake Twitter account making it apparently, and then also realistically speaking it has less of a connection to the giants than odell's does odell's kind of far removed from the giants at this point so not much news going on but you know i was just um because they were showing the on the nfl official nfl youtube channel they were showing a replay of the giants versus buccaneers this 2019 game daniel jones's debut game where we won a comeback victory you know jones showed out and showed us what he got and that was when he basically converted the masses and I was enjoying looking at it, but then in my mind, I kept thinking to myself, man, this game, man, this game just shows a lot of things. Not only a lot of good things uh, that DJ does, but also we saw stuff that he needs to improve on. And I was planning on making this later on in the off season, maybe even closer to the season. And maybe I will still make a like another version of this vid later on. But I want to talk about some things that Daniel Jones needs to improve upon entering his second year. Now then. Of course, it was his rookie year, so there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be the rookie mistakes, and there's going to be mistakes that a rookie probably shouldn't make, but it's the rookie year. That's like the playground for that. And in my opinion, kind of like that playground area period, what I'm talking about is just like a time period where you allow quarterbacks to develop and allow them to make all the mistakes they have to make to work out the kings of the game and whatnot. In my opinion, that period is like two years, two to three years. In recent years with the NFL, that period has almost been shortened down to just the rookie season and sometimes even less than the rookie season. You know, you could, there's not exactly a time you can pinpoint to start it, but I'll just go to Dak Prescott because he's the most recent example I could think of. He's kind of a perfect example of that. His rookie year was the year to work out his kinks, but he had an amazing rookie year. You know, of course, along with Zeke, that's when the Dallas offensive line really became the best in the NFL. They went 13 and 3. And since then, you haven't really seen teams really give rookie quarterbacks a chance to develop past their rookie year. You know, of course, Dak, in my opinion, what should have been his rookie year was what he had his sophomore year when he took the step back. The Cowboys did also take a step back. And you saw a lot more mistakes from him. Uh, next up, you could talk about Deshaun Watson, his rookie year, because he only played, I think, in like six weeks or something. But he was absolutely amazing in those six weeks before his injury. Teams starting, you know, they're starting to have more confidence in these rookie quarterbacks, you know, stepping in, taking over the reins for their team and actually running with it, almost no development time needed. You know, it sh it, that's what happened with Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott. Patrick Mahomes, although, you know, he sat his rookie year and that's something I still think that needs to be done for rookie quarterbacks. Part of me still thinks Daniel Jones should have sat uh, his rookie year because we saw when he was um, out with his injury for a couple weeks, I think he was only out for two weeks. Uh, and Eli started, he came back and Jones played a lot better than he did from beforehand. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that he sat a little bit. He had more time to learn. He spent more time observing what a starting quarterback does. That's something else that's kind of been, you know, fading away from the NFL. They don't, or these teams uh, in particular, they don't allow their quarterbacks to sit. And if they do allow them to start, they don't allow them to have the development time that is needed for the most important position in football and also the most difficult position in football to translate from the college to the NFL level. But Daniel Jones, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't think we're gonna give him that time because honestly, you know, a couple reasons goes into it. Uh, Gelman is on the hot seat and he's gonna be trying to win. Uh, he's already changed coach coaches once. And I do believe the Giants organization, you know, it's just a feeling in me, you know, this is take this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying I have there's reports out there or I have sources or anything that are telling me. I just have a feeling the Giants organization wants this to go a little bit faster than it probably should. Um, you know, like I said, in my opinion, a quarterback, you know, let, let their development period be two years. Even if they did let him take his time, he still needs to take a step forward in his second year because there's problems that need to be addressed first and foremost the fumbleitis the fumble issues this is something everybody knows jones had a lot of fumbles last year i'm pulling it up right now 
and the fumble numbers are extremely staggering you know just thinking about it in my head before i actually brought it up i was thinking maybe 10 or something but no he had a total of 18 fumbles in 13 games with 11 of them lost you know to the other team so he recovered or the giants recovered five of those fumbles but in total daniel jones had 18 fumbles his rookie year and now once again you know i feel like i shouldn't need to say this but i you know it's just a precaution of sorts this is not a video to hate on daniel jones i love the kid i was you know one of the first people to actually say let's give him a chance i said that in my draft reaction video but he does need to improve in some things fumbling being one of them and what goes into i guess hand in hand with that is pocket awareness and pocket presence something he definitely also needs to improve upon which directly affects the offensive line which was one of the reasons i started making this video in the first place like i said watching that tampa bay game jones was sacked like five times i'm pretty sure in that tampa bay game his start and so the offensive line was a big part of it but you know they work together the way you command the pocket the way that you are present in the pocket you read defenses how long you take to read defenses and uh your cadence in the pocket and all that that affects how the offensive line performs and i just want to say this point as simple as i can and you know as quickly as i can because you know this also ties into what's going on right now draft talk should we take a offensive tackle in the first round and go center in the second round or you know should we delay the offensive line a little bit because we need to address that horrendous defense is the offensive line isn't that bad because of how we saw them perform while eli was in there and there is a direct correlation between eli being in the pocket and the offensive line having better performance versus daniel jones being in the pocket and them having the worst performance because eli is a 15 16 year veteran who knows how to read nfl defenses at a way better rate and just you know do the job better at, of reading defenses than daniel jones does it's just a fact jones is just a rookie entering his second year now eli has a lot more experience doing that and is a lot more successful doing that and that is why the offensive line performed better with him back there because the pocket presence and awareness of a 15 year vet they know they know how to adapt to that it takes them time to adapt to a new quarterback let alone a rookie that was kind of thrown in earlier than anybody thought he would be thrown in so one thing he definitely needs to improve upon is reading defenses and having that good pocket awareness having you know pocket presence to help reduce the amount of times uh defenses get through the offensive line now and this is not saying that oh don't go draft a tackle of course not i'm still an advocate for taking an offensive tackle but I am saying, regardless of what happens, this is something that Daniel Jones needs to improve upon by himself. You know, he needs to go talk to the coaches, which obviously is going to be extremely difficult now. You know, but somehow, some way, he needs to get in contact with his quarterback's coach, with Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, or maybe even just, you know, practice by himself, train by himself, be a student of the game by himself in these times to improve upon that. Because that should be something that he takes a step forward in, regardless of what ha happens with the offensive line. And like I said, it goes hand in hand with the fumbles because a majority of these 18 fumbles came from Jones just not knowing some guy was right behind him, right behind him and about to swipe at his hand. So that's another thing, you know, just protecting the football. And this is something that obviously he's going to have to work more so on coaches with than anybody else. You can't really practice this by yourself or improve upon it by yourself, you know, and it's once again, it's going to be difficult to do that considering the situation that we're in. So do we give him and this question just popped into my mind, would you as Giant fans do we give Daniel Jones a pass in this season if he comes out and the fumbling is still an issue? You know, maybe it's not a major issue like it was last year, but it's still an issue because it was a weird offseason and didn't have as much time as they would have liked or needed or they were assumed they would have gotten. Do you give him a pass for that? Do you give the offense in general a pass for that because that comes down to coaching also? Or do you not give them a pass? You, you treat them like it was a normal offseason because every team is going through that i mean there's no exception to what's happening right now every nfl team they're facing you know kind of an unprecedented situation and they're trying as best as they can to adapt just like the giants are so do we give jones a pass in that situation or do we uh do we tell him no you were supposed to improve you know but the two major things pocket presence pocket awareness and fumbling is what he needs to improve upon and i think if he takes a step forward there in fact i expect him to take a step forward there because once again, regardless of what happens with the O-line in the draft, your franchise quarterback that you took sixth overall, top 10 pick, they're supposed to advance on their own. They're not supposed to be a needy quarterback. They're not supposed to be extremely dependent on anything. So as a franchise quarterback, I fully expect 
Daniel Jones to develop on his own. He shouldn't be dependent on having a great offensive line. You know, you look at guys like Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, you know, these mobile quarterbacks that have great instincts that we talk about all the time. Deshaun Watson, you know, I, I talked about him earlier in the video. They were great franchise quarterbacks because they developed despite of the circumstances around them. And that's something I expect from Daniel Jones, being selected sixth overall, having the athletic set that he does have. A lot of people seem to forget that he is a very athletic quarterback. Uh, he is a mobile quarterback. He doesn't, you know, it's not like he's uh, who's somebody that uses the run in their game a lot. Uh, Russell Wilson, I guess, but Russell Wilson really only runs when the pocket breaks down, you know. But he's not exactly somebody that puts running first, you know. So these guys, they developed despite of that because they had that within them, because they were their franchise quarterbacks. They developed in spite of not having the best offensive lines around them. And I expect that from Daniel Jones. No matter what happens with this offensive line next year, I need to see improvement in the way he commands the pocket. And I need to see improvement in ball protection and just knowing when there's somebody behind you about to swipe your arm. So that's what I got for y'all today. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know, just watching this, you know, the replay of the Tampa Bay game, uh, it just popped into my mind. I'm like, man, eh, this would be a good video. Put your comments down below. Do you guys agree with me? Should he be the type of franchise quarterback that's not extremely dependent? And is he that guy? Is he going to take a step forward? Do you think there's something else I'm missing with what he needs to improve upon? And do you agree with me? There's a direct link between the way a rookie quarterback commands the pocket and how the offensive line performs. Like I said, I think that had a great impact on the way they performed throughout the year. But that's what I got for y'all. I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.